Looking back at my life, I think luck has played a huge part in everything I've done. Born at Barry, near Carnoustie, I think the first piece of luck I had was being born into the family that I, mum and dad, and the, the life we had growing up in a place called West Haven. Uh, we'd moved from the small village of Barry, West Haven, as at the east end of Carnoustie small fishing, a fishing village and um, it was a wonderland for us. It was a, a, play, a play area, the rocks, the beach. Uh, in the summer months we played uh, rounders cricket football on a place called the Ballister, a grassy piece of uh, land just near the, near the beach. We fished off the, the rocks, we went sailing on boats, we had a group of friends, we had a marvellous time um, and I think I then found myself after many years working in England and I had no work, I was retired. And I think I looked back at all of the richness I had in my life in Carnoustie and West Haven and it began to get into my thoughts that I should try and write something down about my luck of my early life because from leaving school uh, or before I left school I was a messes boy. Um, I then got a job as an apprentice grocer in Canusti. And by luck I found my way through various jobs to find myself uh, a personnel manager. And it was looking back after all these years I reflected on all of that and I wanted to put some notes from my grandchildren about my church days the Sunday school picnics, the Sunday school Christmas parties, the Boy Scouts, the Cubs, uh, the things I did, the walks in the mountains, all that sort of thing, and my school days. I hadn't then thought about my Mrs. Boy's days, it was part of it, and so having written a, several chapters for my grandchildren, uh, these notes stayed uh, in a drawer, basically until I thought the grandchildren would be old enough to, to uh, make some sense of what I'd tried to write. Uh, later on, coming back to Dundee when my mum had reached her, uh, her 90s, I, I was here in Carnoustie, back in my roots, and I had written what I thought was a novel. Uh, I tell the story about the, the novel uh, I, I actually thought I had a novel, <laughs> and I met a gentleman in a writing group in our Broth, our Broth Writers Circle, and uh, my friend, Eric, read my novel, and he said, yes, Robbie, you have a story there. He said, but you know, writing's rather like sculpting. You start off with a block of stone, and you chip away, and you hone it down to exactly what you want, and I said, yes, I know what you mean, Eric. You've got to get every strand of hair and the eyes and the face features uh, all fixed. I said, now, what state is my novel at? He said, well, Robbie, basically, it's still a block of stone. <laughs> so I got the message from Eric. But having met Eric, I then found myself in Tay Writers, another writing group. All this just, just happened by luck. And uh, I started trying to write short stories. So for the Tay Writers uh, meetings, I used to relate. Uh, it was a very helpful group. We got good, ad good advice, we got good feedback, nothing hugely critical, but very friendly. And somehow I ran out of short stories and started to write little chapters about my message boy days, which I hadn't previously done. To cut a long story short, I, I had something like a draft of 20 chapters, about 30,000 words. And all of my colleagues at Tay Writers had heard all of this, and twice. <laughs> and I began to say, well, where is all this going? And I'd met a gentleman by the name of Eddie Small, uh, Dundee University uh, member of staff. Eddie is uh, a big name in writing and literacy, uh, literature and writing groups in Dundee. Eddie read it, the first three chapters, and he said, yes, I like this. You've got a good voice, as he called it. 
He said, but is your mum in this book? Is your dad in this book? I said, no. Oh, he said, I need to know more about this little boy, Robbie, this little messes laddie. He said, uh, uh, how many words have you written? I told him. He said, I need 70,000 words, basically doubling the whole, the whole story. So eventually I did all of this. And that was what I, I had. I had it edited. But then, of course, I then had another piece of luck. Through a long-standing connection with a, a family, I, um, I found myself a, with a publisher in the name of Extremist Publishing Limited, <laughs> Tom and Julie. They turned out to be uh, young members of a family I'd known many years ago, and my mum and dad were long-standing friends. Uh, so from there, this next piece of luck, I found myself with my book and it was published. And there are still things going on yet today that I think are still as exciting as that. All of this has happened to me. I didn't plan to write a book. I didn't plan to write anything about the 1950s social history or whatever. It was all just a little story and I'm still astounded to this day how this has managed to reach this point for me. But it's been a huge springboard for me and I hope to write a few more things in future.